Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of StetlerLocal.com TV. My name is B with Stetler Local, and today is Tuesday, September 8th. Um, it is Seniors TV today, and I am joined by Sylvia Wool. Sylvia has worked with um, senior centers for how many years? Too many. <laughs> a few, a few years. Um, she is based out of Alliance, but does work. You said Castor. Anywhere, anywhere basic, that they want. Basically to anywhere. Yeah, you. If you've been in Stetler, you've been yes. to some of the facilities here. For sure. Yeah. Um, so Sylvia is going to chat for a little while about the fun parts of aging. So I'm going to tune into this so I have something to look forward to. Um, at 10.30, Katie Bainbridge, Katie Bainbridge sorry, is going to be here from Thrive C360 to get us moving. And then at 10.45, Alex Adair from the Stetler Public Library is going to be back with Stetler Book Club. Seniors Book Club. Oh my goodness, my tongue is just a mess. It's See? the end of a long weekend. Right? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I've made all the mistakes okay. you're going to now. <laughs> I have no problem making my own. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and just one quick thank you to our sponsor from today, uh, Raritan Services. For all your digital advertising needs, visit raritanservices.ca. And I will leave you to it. Thanks, B. <laughs> you betcha. Have fun. I will. Good morning. I've been titled uh, my speak t speaking today, Aging Like Fine Wine or Whining While I Age. And hello out there in TV video land. I feel like Roger Miller when he sang Kansas City Star, that's what I are. Because here I am on video wondering what on earth I said yes to. This Stetler.com thing is a very cool idea for your community, and I thank B for bringing it to my attention. So here I am. I decided to share some of my thoughts with, uh, with you about the reality of aging and hopefully we can share a smile or two in these ridiculously unique and trying times. Bless your brave hearts for allowing yourselves to be associated with the S word, senior. As my own aging process marches on with total disregard for my dignity, I've come to appreciate the amazing strength of seniors. I always hope my presentations will bring you laughter, but as you know, time marches relentlessly on but as my friend Mary Lynn assured me that I needed to believe in the adage of the older I get, the better I was. The girl in the mirror is 73 years old. I often lie about this part in my presentations, but my conscience wouldn't allow it this time. The girl inside the girl in the mirror is 40, give or take a year or two. I watched my mom age gracefully and beautifully into her 70s, but I didn't pay good attention. Who the hell knew I'd ever reach this pinnacle? I had the good fortune to work for over 20 years in the Castor Seniors Housing and Lodge, and it's one of the few places that old was a relative term, as many of my residents declared on each and every one of my birthdays that I was still wet behind the ears. I was born in the 40s and was raised on the family farm throughout the 50s with literally no pot to pee in. But we were fortunate as we had a solidly built outhouse and lots of catalogs. Speaking of which, have you in my age bracket ever wondered why our outhouses were mostly two or three holers? Two for adults and a lower one for small children? Did families actually play and then poop together? My husband has a fit because I use that word, so apologies to the sensitive. Perhaps it was just the forerunner of the his, hers, whatever bathroom and gender discussions we seek to hear about. Here's a little story with the outhouse that I kind of like. Mom was in the kitchen fiddling around when she hollers out, Pa, you need to go out and fix the outhouse. Pa replies, there ain't nothing wrong with the outhouse. Ma yells back, yes there is, now get out there and fix it. So Pa moseys to the outhouse, looks around, yells back, Ma, there ain't nothing wrong with the outhouse. Ma replies, stick your head in the hole. Pa yells back, I ain't sticking my head in that hole. Ma says, you have to stick your head in the hole to see what to fix. So with that, Pa sticks his head in the hole, looks around and yells back, Ma, there ain't nothing wrong with this outhouse. Ma hollers back. Now, take your head out of the hole. 
Paul proceeds to pull his head out of the hole and start yelling, Ma, help! My beard's stuck in the cracks in the toilet seat! To which Ma replies, hurts, don't it? Throughout the 60s, I watched the flower power generation, Elvis and the Beatles on a neighbor's TV. So I wasn't directly involved in that portion of history, and unfortunately, I missed the drug scene altogether. I say unfortunately because some of my contemporaries are still getting a thrill from the flashback powers of LSD. Then came the 70s. I went from being a daughter and a sort of a wild thing to being a wife, mother, an in-law to a whole new family. Suddenly you're supposed to have all the answers from questions from the husband of where are my socks to what's making the baby cry. Answers and wisdom did not arrive with labor pains, but a mother's guilt certainly did. The 80s were the amazing years of raising our sons. It was during this time that I became a travel agent for guilt trips. I carried you for 10 months, had three days of labor, and this is how you repay me. The 90s were the transition years to menopause. Ladies my age were just finding out about PMS and menopause mood swings. We hadn't previously known that crabbiness had another name. Our group had always just thought we felt like killing the bugger on a regular basis just because he was annoying. Dale never really caught on to the wisdom of the old African proverb of do not insult a crocodile with both feet in the water. He has consequently been on the verge of extinction many times. We were surprised to hit the next millennium, the terror of Y2K, when we thought the world was going to end. We're in the 2000s, and in 2020, I'm still occasionally writing checks for the 1990s. The media continues to deluge us with glowing reports of the upcoming golden years. We, the baby boomer generation. I do realize the other option to aging is not aging, which is not a viable choice either. However, I'm still moving on, kicking and screaming and protesting all the way. There are moments of glory and equal moments of challenge, but what the hell? Basically, life is good, but aging is not graceful, lovely, or filled with dignity, and don't let anyone tell you it is. Aging ain't no place for sissies. On the other hand, I have many seniors in my life who have aged gracefully, are lovely people, and have more dignity than I'll ever have. I need intense training for that. My spirit is willing, my flesh is weak. My false teeth were my first brush with aging, no pun intended, in the aging not so, so gracefully process. You can't trust the blasted things. You can be laughing uproariously at a joke that you likely didn't hear correctly in the first place, and suddenly the suction lets loose and there you are gaping mouth and your upper plate resting in their naked glory on top of your bottom plate, an imminent danger of shooting out of your mouth. All food has to be viewed as a possible enemy. My vision's no longer reliable. My neck is always sore due to the constant neck and head tilting trying to line up the bifocals. One night, Dale and I rounded a curve on Highway 13 and there was a truck with one light bearing down on us. We thought we were doomed. It was a train rolling merrily down the track, so not only can't we get our bifocals to work, we have no depth perception. The poor vision thing is very frustrating for me, and we have to take the damn glasses off to read, and then the memory's so bad that you have no clue where you put them. I need my vision to be accurate because I've lost my memory. It seems the only thing I can retain anymore is water. I have lists everywhere that have to be read, and if I can't see or remember where I've left the damn things for that particular day, then my world comes to a screeching halt, because I sure can't function without my list. And for God's sake, don't move stuff. You know how you suddenly get the irresistible urge to put something important in another place for safekeeping? Don't. And you don't have to explain yourself when others find your sugar in the fridge and your cream in the medicine cabinet. And so what if you lose your glasses on top of your head? 
sums up my life. How about yours? My body is no longer my temple. I don't think it ever was, but it's a good line. This body has been of my fat for so long they're become inseparable buddies. I have a friend who's my age, and she said to me in disgust one day, well, don't you just hate getting old? You aren't even the same size at night that you started out to be in the morning. And it's true. Your shoes get uncomfortably tight, so do your rings, as do your waistbands of pants and skirts. As through the day, you develop and retain enough of a gas buildup that you could make the Arabian nations envious or alarm Greenpeace. I used to leap out of my lovely easy boy chair and move efficiently onto whatever task was at hand. Now I slide to the front of the chair, making sure all joints are attached to movable hinges, then rise slowly, checking to make sure there's no accompanying dizziness as a result of the move before I take my first step towards doing the task I no longer remember. As the saying goes, cremation is my last chance for a smoking hot body. We know mirrors don't lie. We're just grateful the damn things don't laugh. My doctor has become my enemy. In the last 15 years, he's given me a tongue, nasty tongue lashing about my habits, about my high cholesterol, high blood pressure, about the cancer, about diabetes. So to you youngsters here today, those of you under 70, stay the hell away from doctors. You never know what they might give you. I thought it was hilarious a few years ago when a friend of ours once said, I belong to the Canadian Diabetic Association because I'm a diabetic. I belong to the Heart and Stroke Foundation because I've had a heart attack. I belong to the Canadian Cancer Society because I've had cancer. I can hardly wait to get Alzheimer's so I can forget the whole friggin' works. It's no longer funny. I have always battled being overweight, but I recently was pleased with my success with a 14-day diet plan, which I completed in 3 hours and 25 minutes. I joined an expensive gym exercise class and didn't lose an ounce. Apparently, you have to show up. I always feel better when the doctor says something's normal for my age, but it suddenly occurred to me that dying is also normal for my age. I have found that singing the hymn, Nearer My God to Thee, has taken on a whole new meaning. The elasticity of my bladder muscle seems to have gone the way of an overstretched and useless elastic band. Lady, never pass up the opportunity to pee. As my cousin Bob says, at our age, we're either trying to think of a name or looking for a place to pee. Dale and I recently went on a mission for his oil company to locate abandoned wells throughout the forested North Country. I left my mark on every tree patch throughout the North. Pucker strings have lost their tactfulness as well, and there are often random farts arriving unannounced. Have any of you noticed that manufacturers are likely all children? They certainly have no understanding of seniors. Depends and continent pads have gone the way of Kotex. Remember, ladies, when it used to be one size fits all? Remember how we would carry our huge Kotex boxes wrapped in brown paper so no one would guess that we were having a visit from Aunt Flo? Now, with both of these products, it's become a major decision. Do you want light or heavy? Full length or shortened? Scented or senseless? Do you want overnight? Do you want daytime? Wings, no wings, wingless? Pretty pink, passionate purple, for God's sake. And while we're on the topic of manufacturers, have you noticed how they promote all the miracle creams to help us defy the aging process? It is apparently essential that we get rid of our wrinkles, and of course, the unspoken promise is to also get rid of the sagging neck skin resembles a plucked chicken that's been left out in the sun for a day. So, because I would rather be dead than out of style, I, of course, immediately went out to purchase the wondrous stuff. Well, let me tell you, the Hope Diamond would be forever secure if it was packaged by Oil of Olay. By the time I had dismembered the package using brute force, scissors, tweezers, and sheer determination, I had developed 10 new wrinkles and no longer cared about my baggy skin. 
And besides, I couldn't find my magnifying glass to read the instructions. The reality of aging has hit me hard and I can see my future through my bifocals rather than my usual rose-colored glasses. I had sons, no daughters, and I know the time will come in the near future that my chin hairs will lengthen and my poor vision won't tell me I'm growing a hairier face. And my sons won't know enough to pluck them still believing that mothers don't grow beards. For the present, I'm trying to believe my chin hairs are just stray eyebrows and the hair growth of my legs at least has started slowing down. Gives me more time to tend to my newly acquired mustache. Good Lord. Speaking of my two sons, isn't it strange when the kids are little and driving you crazy, no one is interested in keeping them for a few weeks or months. And then they grow up to be these awesome human beings and leave home. There's no justice. But because I had two sons, I like this little story. A couple had two little boys, age 8 and 10, who were excessively mischievous. The two were always getting into trouble, and their parents could be assured that if any mischief occurred in their town, it would be their two young sons. They would likely be involved in some way. The parents were at their wit's end about what to do with the errant behavior of these boys. The mother had heard that a clergyman in town had been very successful in disciplining children in the past, so she asked her husband if he thought they should send the boys to speak with the clergyman. The husband said, well, we might as well before I really have to lose my temper. The clergyman agreed to speak to the boys, but asked to see them individually. The eight-year-old went to, to see him first. The clergyman sat the boy down and asked him sternly, where is God? The boy made no response. So the clergyman repeated the question in an even sterner tone, where is God? Again, the boy made no attempt to answer. So the clergyman raised his voice even more and shook his finger in the boy's face. Where is God? At that, the boy bolted from the room, ran directly home, slamming himself into the closet. His puzzled older brother followed him into the closet and said, What happened? The younger boy replied, We're in big trouble this time. God's missing and they think we did it. Good hearing is a vital component of my life. I have to be an effective communicator, and the most important part of communicating is listening. I must sometimes look like a total idiot while attempting to look intelligent, unable to hear a word, and grinning and answering inappropriately. I have expensive hearing aids that haven't missed a thing from their permanent location in the bathroom drawer. I have a dear friend in Alliance who I love dearly. She has a soft, gentle voice. I haven't heard a thing she said in 30 years. I saw a vision of my future self through one of my residents several years ago. The lady had asked me to take her to the priest's house so she could discuss her own funeral services with him. The priest had a very pronounced Polish accent and also had some difficulty understanding our English language. And my lady had extremely poor hearing. The conversation went somewhat like this. Lady, I want you to bury me, priest. I would be delighted to marry you. Who is the lucky man? Lady, eh? What did he say? Me. He says he'll be happy to marry you. Well, he can't bury me yet. I'm not dead. Priest, that'll be so nice for you. Lady, he thinks it's nice I'm dying? Me, trying to explain to both and neither allowing for any interruptions. Priest, when do you want the service? Lady, in dignity. Well, after I'm dead, of course. Priest, dead, looking at me. Does she think she's dying? Poor lady, you look the picture of health. Lady, eh, what'd he say? How much wealth will it take to bury me? On and on it went. I'm sure you can understand my reluctance to lose my hearing abilities. I find that life's transitions go by before you even realize they're passing. For example, it recently occurred to me that Dale and I began our marriage with the bedroom as a main focal point. Wine, scented candles, soft, sultry music, me and my sexy, filthy negligee, satin sheets where we would talk of our hopes 
and dreams until we were hours into the morning. Of course, we did other things too, but my life's not totally an open book. Fifty years later, our bedroom's now filled with the scent of Vicks, hers, A535, his, flannelette sheets and an electric blanket. The radio turned to the news station so that we can be depressed and apprehensive both day and night and turned up loud enough so the neighbors can be depressed too. She is now in a flannel at nighty and snores and drools most of the night and he is in his long johns drinking mailox regularly. Although I must confess our bedroom is once again a room of action. We're both up several times a night to pee. And really, the only thing that gets turned on in our bed is the electric blanket. Every day presents a new challenge. Not only our physical and mental changes, but the world around us is changing. This year might well be the year of entitlement, the year of being offended about everything, or the year of protesters, perhaps the year of crabbing. Maybe we need to go back to the 60s and flower power and peace and love and a smoke-filled haze. We have the haze still, but it's no longer producing mellow yellow. Robin Williams once said, if you remember the 60s, you weren't there. And now, for God's sake, they threw in COVID-19 and put us in a form of limbo with everyone scared half to death of breathing anywhere near we seniors because we're so fragile and frail. Do they not know we're a generation that just dealt with it? We're a suck it up buttercup type of people. But our learning curve is on a roller coaster high. We're also in the age of technology. How many of you remember all of your passwords and or where you have them written so they will never be forgotten? How many have given the exact password that you know is correct only to be rejected? Do you have an iPad or a computer? Do you even know 1% of what causes them to work properly? How many of you miss and longingly remember the simplicity of the old phone on the wall with the news traveling faster than Facebook on the party line? Now there's no wall attached and it's just challenging finding the damn phone as it wanders around the house. Our vehicles are now our masters. They have control over everything. They have so many bells and whistles we will never again be captain of our own transportation. Recently, my brother, his lady friend, and I were traveling home from a cousin's place about midnight in the brother's brand new Ford. We're on a dirt road, pitch black out, and it starts to rain. By the time we found the windshield wiper and defrost, we had Johnny Cash blaring full blast, the lights on dim, the interior, an interior random light on and the sunroof wide open. We're always worried about losing our driver's license. I had a 90 year old at the lodge when I worked there who had been told that he could only drive with somebody with a driver's license with him. Well, I saw out my office window when Bob pulled in uh, to the parking lot all by himself and got his six foot frame out of his little car. So when he came in the lodge, I said, Bob, I thought you had to drive with somebody with a driver's license all the time. Well, he said, who the hell would be stupid enough to drive with me? I rest my case. Our kids don't quite know what to do with us. They're a bit alarmed as they realize our roles are reversing. A recent conversation overheard between our eldest son and his dad. Shane and Dale were in the front room looking at advertising flyers, and Shane said, There's a tent sale at the Brick, Dale. I don't need a tent. I have a house. Shane, starting to explain what a tent sale means. Dale, I know that, Shane. Just screwing with you, Shane. I never know for sure anymore. We mostly understand one another's language as seniors, but we are lumped together as a group of senior people and the younger generation speaks to us like we're a different species. We all know lousy customer service firsthand. We've either, we have either disappeared or we are having solicitous, condescending millennials patting us olders on oldsters on the head and calling us sweetie and dearie for God's sake. 
I seem to have disappeared. I become invisible. And communication with me in a store is often patronizing when they do happen to notice me. I hadn't really been aware of the shift until my husband and I were in a restaurant with one of our sons and his wife. Both are very young and very attractive and engaging. The waitress was nearly stumbling over herself trying to help them with their order and couldn't do enough for them. What the hell? Just that waitress? Uh -uh. I started paying attention, even in stores, to find an employee to help me with customer questions. Makes me feel as though aliens have captured all employees and hidden them on another planet. But enter with a young, attractive friend or one of my gorgeous daughters-in-law. We have staff fawning over us ad nauseum. We're being a re recognized a bit more these days as living longer and often having more money at our disposal than younger folk. Thus, older models are appearing. The gorgeous Daphne Self is 84. And at long last, even the older actresses are given lots of recognition and respect and awards. Judy Dench, 83, Meryl Streep, 68, Helen Moran, 72. In the male category, Burt Reynolds, 82. And put your shoes under my bed anytime, Tom Selleck is in his 70s. So boys and girls milk it for all it's worth. Flaunt your age with attitude. And speaking of attitude, it is vital as we age that we keep our sense of humor and adjust and readjust our attitude often. I have some uh, stories here about attitude that I'm going to skip over because I see I might be running out of time. Uh, I'd like to just wind up with some thoughts for you to take to your bed tonight when you can't sleep. You're the author of your life story. You're still writing it. Don't let anyone else hold the pen. In conclusion and in all seriousness, please remember that no matter what age you are, that you are a very important human being and you must always be treated with respect. And in turn, treat others with respect. Senior abuse is alive and well, even in our small communities. If you or someone you love is being abused verbally, physically, or mentally, you are obliged to notify someone in authority that you trust. I have found that there are playground bullies, even in our seniors' groups and seniors' facilities. You deserve and have earned the respect. Accept nothing less. At the end of my talk, I ask that you just be interested and be interesting. The strangest part of being alive and relatively well in this 21st century is that I'm only clearly disguised as an adult. There still lurks in this crusty old exterior the girl who ran barefoot through the mud puddles, and my best advice to all of you is never lose that child, the one who laughed and greeted each day with the sheer joy of living. Keep that little girl or that little boy with you. Smiles are contagious, and don't waste your entire time pole vaulting over mouse turds. If anyone's still listening, thank you for your time. I hope I caused you to smile once or twice. Smiles are still free. Thanks. Thank you so much, Sylvia. That was fantastic. Thank you. We're definitely going to have to have you back. Oh, well, good. Tell some good stories. <laughs> Like Be careful <laughs> what you ask for. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So big thank you to Sylvia Wold for coming in and entertaining us with your wisdom. No, oh, my pleasure. I like it. Perfect. So I'm going to do a little bit of furniture rearranging here for our next guest. Okay. So if you want to head out. Okay. I will, and thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. I'll chat with you. You get, I'll wait for you. All right, so another quick thank you to our sponsor for today, uh, Raritan Services, for all your digital advertising needs. Visit raritanservices.ca. Raritan is R-A-I-R-D-A-N, raritanservices.ca. I am just going to do a quick move around, get the table out of the way. We have Katie Bainbridge um, from Thrive 360 Gym coming in next, so she's going to need some space. One quick moment.
everybody. I'm Katie from Thrive 360 here in Settler. Um, we're the gym that's just on the truck route there beside Heartland Auto. So anyways, for today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a few moments talking about some of the benefits of exercise for older adults. And then I'm going to take you through a quick and easy workout that you can do at home with um, just some simple materials like a chair and a couple of water bottles. Okay, so to get started, I just want to talk about some of the benefits of exercising for seniors and, and uh, aging adults. And so this is actually information that I've pulled off of the Canada Participant Action website. It's a really good source of, of great information. So the number one uh, benefit of exercising as an older adult is disease prevention. So studies have shown that maintaining a regular physical activity can help prevent many common diseases such as heart disease and diabetes. Exercise improves overall immune function, which is important for seniors as their immune systems are often compromised. Even light exercise such as walking can be a powerful tool for preventable disease management. Number two, improved mental health. The mental health benefits of exercise are nearly endless. Exercise produces endorphins. Those are the feel good hormones, which acts as stress relievers and leave you feeling happy and satisfied. In addition, exercise has been linked to improving sleep, which is especially important for older adults who often suffer from insomnia and disrupted sleep patterns. Number three, a, dis a decreased risk of falls, very important. Older adults are at a higher risk of falls, which can prove to be potentially disastrous for maintaining independence. Exercise improves strength and flexibility, which also help improve balance and coordination, reducing the risk of falls. Seniors take much longer to recover from falls, so anything that helps avoid them in the first place is extremely important. Number four, social engagement. Whether you join a walking group, go to a group fitness class, or visit a gardening club, exercise can be made into a fun social event. Maintaining strong social ties is important for aging adults to feel a sense of purpose and avoid feelings of loneliness or depression. The key is to find a form of exercise you love and it will never feel like a chore again. And the fifth benefit is improved cognitive function. Regular physical activity and fine-tuned motor skills benefit cognitive function. Countless studies suggest a lower risk of dementia for physically active individuals, regardless of when you begin a routine. So I think the important thing to remember there is that it's never too late. You're never too old to begin exercising and you're never too old to um, maintain muscle that you already have or even to gain more muscle. It's of course easier when you are a younger adult to, to gain muscle, but even if you're an older adult, you can still gain muscle. It's just consistency and just getting out and doing it. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you through a little bit of an exercise routine. So the first one I'm gonna do is a sit to stand. And actually I'm just gonna move this chair sideways here. See if you can see me. All right, so for this one, I'm hoping that you can see the chair. I've, I'm kind of perched towards the front of the chair, so the, the back is, is back here. Now I've got my feet a little bit wide. They're not really close together. They're a little bit wider, a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stand up. I'm gonna press through my heels and stand up. So just like this. There we go. Now you can have your hands down like this, or you can bring them up like this. I kind of like to have them up. Feels like it gives me something to do with my hands. So I'm gonna do 10 of these. Oh, hello. I'm just gonna tilt you, you down me? just a little bit. Oh, okay, sounds good. Thank you, that's perfect. There we go. Now we can see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I think I had five done. We'll do another five. There we go, there's seven, eight, nine, 
10. All right, so for this one, another important thing is to make sure that you don't sway back. So you're not trying to use your momentum to get up, you're really trying to press your heels and just stand up. Um, if you're finding that tricky, something that you can do is use a taller chair so that your, your uh, legs aren't bent quite as much. So you don't have as far to come up. Okay, so I'm gonna do another 10. One, two, three, four, There we go. So every time that you do a set, so 10 of, of one exercise, that's called a set. Every time you do a set, you wanna have a little bit of a rest. I like to take about 30 to 90 seconds between each set. So I'm probably at 30, then we'll do it again. Okay, I think that's long enough. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, I'm just going to stay, stay standing up for that one. All right. Now, the next one that I'm going to do is a forward lunge. So again, I'm going to use this chair. And I'm going to use the chair to help me balance a little bit. Uh, let's see. So, I'm going to put that down. So I've got my hand on the chair here. It's just for a little balance. And I'm going to take a step forward and just bend my knee a little bit. And then I'll use the other leg. So doing 10 of these, now you don't have to go down very far. And if you feel like you don't need the chair for balance, then you don't have to use it either. So I think that's six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So when I'm doing a lunge, what I'm really wanting to focus on is keeping my chest tall, so I'm not bending over at the waist each time I go down. Um, you don't have to bend your knees very far, just go down as comfortably as you can go. Some people, when they first start doing this exercise, really hardly get any bend at all, and that's okay. Just do what you can do. So it might even look just like a step forward, just like that but it's just important to do whatever you can do. So that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. So actually, I'm going to skip on to my next exercise because I only have about six minutes left. Um, if you're doing these at home, do uh, three sets of each exercise, but I'm going to skip along to show you some more. All right, so we'll use this chair again. So, I've, and I have a water bottle full of water. Very easy. If you don't have a water bottle at home, you could use a soup can or anything like that. So I'm going to just bend over this chair a little bit. I've got my arms straight down and I'm just going to row up. So it's a one arm row with that water bottle. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and so now for the other side, I just stepped over this way a little bit. I've got my feet are staggered. So one foot in front of the other. Time for this other arm. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All 
All right, so three sets of that exercise. Now the next one I want to do is a wall push-up. Uh, so let's see if you can see me in. So I'm just going to spin that this way a little bit. So I've got a wall here. So if we can go back a little. Oh, maybe not. I'll just go back. Ah, here we go. So I've got this wall here. I'm going to put my hands up against the wall. And I'm, I'm kind of a, a little further back from the wall. I'm not quite on my tippy toes. Put my hands down a little lower. You want them to be a little lower than your shoulder. I'm just going to come in and push off of the wall. So this is, it's a pushing motion, just like a push up. But because we're doing it off of a wall, it's so much easier. So five. easy for you, you can always use a kitchen counter or if you have a nice big sturdy couch, you could do a push up off of the couch. I've got the chair here so I can show you what that would look like. I think it's strong enough. So just like that, whoop, <laughs> it moved on me a little bit. So make sure whatever you're doing a push up on is sturdy and it's not going to slide out on you. <laughs> okay. The next one we're going to do, and I'll move this camera back here a bit. We're going to do some lateral raises. So I've got the water bottles again, one in each hand. And I'm just going to raise my arms up to shoulder height. All right. So there's two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome. And the last one I'm going to show you today is this is for the core. All right, I'm going to bring that out like that. So I'm, I'm supporting myself on a chair or use a kitchen counter, something that's pretty tall. And all I'm going to do is just lift one leg at a time. So this is a mountain climber. So lifting those legs, that's going to help strengthen our core without having to get down on the floor. So we've got seven. Nine, ten, and this one you could do a few more. If ten is, is feeling pretty easy, you could go all the way up to twenty. Um, if you want to make it a little more difficult, you could do them from the floor too. There we go. Okay, so that's it. Those are the exercises for today. Um, if you guys would like more information, you can contact us. Um, we have our website, thrive360fitness.com. Uh, we're also on Facebook. Um, and or feel free to give me a call. It's Katie at 403-741-9920. Uh, oh, yes. And I should tell you, we do offer an exercise class for older adults Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m. And right now it's a little bit of a mixture of maybe one time in the gym, maybe one time through Zoom, or while the weather's nice, maybe one time outside. So if you have any questions about that or if you'd like to know more, just con contact us at Thrive360. Thank you, have a great day. Friends, he's gonna bring me the table so that I can set the games up and they're easier to see. Thank you. Okay. Oh, 
I mean, I just don't have time for that. No, do that. We were just talking outside in the lobby about how clumsy I am, and I'm about to prove it to you. All right. My name is Alex. I am from the Stetler Public Library. And the first thing I want you to know is that on September 14th, not so long from now, we will be premiering our senior game kits that you can check out from the library. And this game will be in them. It's called Call to Mind, the communication game. And we've played it a couple of times on this program. And this game will also be in them. It's called Shake Loose a Memory. And this is a dice game that we've also played. I'd like to start with. Oh, just get that. There we go. There we go. I'd like to start by continuing our story about Charlie and Hazel, which was originally written by Sylvia Wold. We saw her earlier today. And where we were, um, Charlie had had some medical issues, and Hazel's starting to worry and she's about to call her daughter. Chapter three, stuck in bed. Hazel bit her lip as she nervously waited for Catherine to answer, second guessing herself. Maybe she really shouldn't bother her. She was a bit overwhelmed, but was managing okay, and Charlie would be back on his feet in no time. Hello, Catherine's exacerbated sigh over the line was almost unbearable for Hazel and immediately put her in a bit of a dither. Um, hi, honey. Hazel caught herself stumbling through finding the words she wanted to say. She just wanted to cry out and tell Catherine how tired she was and how she'd love it if one of the boys came over to help with the lawn. She wanted to explain how hard it was keeping on top of everything and remembering details and tending to Charlie and the worry, oh, how she worried. I'm just going in to say hi. We haven't spoken in a while. She was frustrated with her sudden resignation. Mom, we spoke on Tuesday. How's dad? Catherine's tone was short and curt. He's fine, resting now. He needs more rest these days. Well, I'm sorry to have bothered you. I didn't mean to. Hazel was cut off sharply by her daughter. You're not bothering me, Mom. It's fine. I'm just busy, and Jared just got in, and I haven't even finished making dinner yet. Look, Mom, I'll call you tomorrow, okay? It's just bad timing. Meanwhile, Charlie was in bed upstairs, feeling completely helpless. He didn't dare get out of bed, or else Hazel would march right up the stairs, shouting instructions about how not to get up too fast, how he needed to stay in bed, how he could trip and fall and crack his head open, but he really needed to pee. All this was too much for Hazel, he thought. She was never good at handling setbacks. Now she was so worried about his health. His silly little insignificant attack had her worried about his seemingly impending death. It was absolutely ridiculous. He thought about Lloyd and Marilyn, friends of theirs who had just moved into a new senior's place on the West End. It was nice, some might even say spiffy. They kept going on about how much they liked it there. Something like that would be a nice change of scenery. The house was becoming a pain for him and Hazel to maintain, and not because he'd been rendered useless by all the heart and stroke stuff going on. It was simply just too much house. Lloyd and Marilyn's place even had a little pub on the main floor. Should Charlie broach the subject of selling the house to Hazel? Or should Hazel and Charlie find other options to get the supports they need at home? Take a break between chapters three and four, and you can play Shake Loose a Memory. So again, this is a dice game, and all of the cards have different numbers of pips on them, just like a die does. Let's turn my paper out of this. Little known, it's like aglets on a sneaker lace, the pips on a die. There we go. I roll it, and it's a number one. So I'll find one of these cards. this card if you have made apple juice. Remember pressing apples. Any 
どうぞ。絵の感覚かな。絵の感覚です。We used to go out and take pictures though. We were close enough to the orchard. And I still. We were eating peaches the other day, and I still needed to eat mine cut up in a bowl with a little bit of sugar sprinkled over it, just like my mom used to do for me. And apple juice, no, I never made apple juice. But it's that sort of harvest season where you gotta make a lot of things. The last of my tomatoes are ripening in the garden, and I'm really, really hoping I can get another couple of BLTs out of my garden. <laughs> Bacon does not grow in the garden, of course. I have to go to the grocery store for that. But the lettuce has been, and it's been, and it's been a nice few times. So let us know in the comments what your experience with apple juice or growing or orchards or even baking. I learned how to bake with Saskatoon when I first got here, and there is nothing quite as delicious as a Saskatoon crisp made with double crunchy, warmed up cold ice cream on top. Let me know if you disagree with that and I will tell you why you're wrong. Chapter four is called Not a Nursing Home. It had been a long day. Hazel headed up the stairs to prepare herself for bed and check on Charlie. Upon entering the room, she saw Charlie propped up in bed doing the New York Times crossword she'd brought him earlier that day. Charlie always did it in 10. Seeing Hazel, Charlie set down his reading glasses on the nightstand and took a look at his beautiful head. He'd made up his mind he was going to tell her how he felt. Honey, I've been thinking about a few things, Charlie said softly. What is it? Hazel sounded worried. Well, I've seen you motoring around here the past few days, trying to take care of everything, stressing about me. Are you doing okay? Hazel's eyes half relief and half to pause to think about how to calm Charlie's worries. It hasn't been that bad, I don't mind. Charlie raised his eyebrows and crooked his mouth into that look he'd given her for over 60 years, indicating he wasn't buying a stitch of what she was saying. Okay, okay, she laughed. Yes, I have been a little overwhelmed with everything. Have you seen the lawn? We have a jungle growing back. Charlie laughed. Well, you always wanted to go to South America. I just saved you thousands of dollars. They both giggled. Charlie took a deep breath as he tried very hard to put on his serious face. He knew the next words out of his mouth needed to be both gentle and convincing. Hazel, I've been giving this a lot of thought. We aren't as young and spry as we'd like to think we are. The house is big, the lawn is bigger. I've gone into a bit of panic mode with my whole stroke business. You know, Lauren and Marilyn seem to be loving their condo, and well, Charlie was coming sharp off the breath. I am not moving to one of those old folks' places, Charlie. Lauren and Marilyn need a place like that because Marilyn's going senile. No, I'm managing just fine. Hazel was starting to get flustered. Charlie panicked a bit. This was not how he'd seen this conversation going. Marilyn is just fine, and it's not an old folks' place. It's a condo. There's a fitness center. They have gardens. Heck, Lloyd was telling me they even have laundry service there. It's like a hotel. Hazel threw her hands up. Right, that's just what we need. We need to be lazy like Lloyd and have people waiting on us hand and foot. No, thank you. I'm not going to one of those miserable places to sit around and play bingo and wait to die. Charlie resigned himself. He knew better than to get into the differences between Lloyd and Marilyn's place and the ideas Hazel had in her head. It was clearly a sensitive topic for her, probably because she'd watched her own mother pass away in an auxiliary hospital years ago. But this wasn't a hospital. Heck, it wasn't even a nursing home. It was a condo, for crying out loud. Charlie wondered what he could do to get Hazel more information. Should Charlie give Lloyd and Marilyn a call so they could gather some brochures about their place? Should Charlie call the kids and have a conversation with them? the end of chapter four. Next week we'll start chapter five. It's called A Dinner Invitation. But right now we're going to play around a call to mind as soon as I can make sure all these pages 
are stuck into this binder properly. You know, it's not mine, it's Sylvia's, and I want to keep this for her. So I'll put away Share Through Some Memory, and remember these kits will be available to borrow at the Stetler Public Library starting on the 14th. Really just about a week from now. Oh yes. Call to Mind, the communication game. Here we go. Published by the University um, UCL. University College London. Okay. It's got this game board that I don't normally use on TV because it's very hard to see it all. But on the game board, you can put down the red cards for the past, the green cards for active topics, the blue cards for the present, and the yellow cards for creative topics. And you move around the board using a spinner that looks like this. Oops, I think I scored that here. I spin the spinner. And my thumb's not in the way. You can see where it lands. And it's landed on red, past. So I'm going to find a red card. Okay. And as you can see, it says past there. And here we have so it says, find a picture on the board that reminds you of pets. And let's see. Oh, here we go. There's a great one right at the bottom. I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a dog right there in the red square. Yeah, I would pick that one. Sorry, I have the hiccups. Mmm. I mean to have the hiccups on my TV. I apologize. <laughs> Comic relief. Pets, do you like being around animals, birds, and fish, and how do they make you feel? What do you like about visiting a zoo or a farm? I can answer that question by talking about my house. We have four cats, two dogs. And previously, we have taken care of guinea pigs, chinchillas, rabbits, <laughs> pregnant cats, um, which are a whole different beast. We like living in a zoo. Um, Services.ca, there we go, just in time for our sponsor. Raridanservices.ca, R-A-I-R-D-A-N, services.ca for all your digital advertising needs. Um, and if you missed the last bit of that, the card was about pets and how they make you feel. And I talked about how we have a lot of pets at home and how it's very soothing to snuggle a small animal um, or even a big animal. We have a very large dog and usually I'm a little bit intimidated by her, but when she senses that I'm not having an easy time, she will come to me and make herself small and sit and just offer me the top of her head to pet. And I don't know, there's something about a dog who gets it, who really understands. But it's a minute after 11 now and I've gotta be going. So I was taught how to finish this all by myself. I'm gonna let you know that tomorrow we'll have Brian Lazat and Judy Gentis um, from the Metis Nation. We'll have Jamie Wall from JD's Academy Advanced Synergy, and we'll have Brad Snodgrass from Shoppers Drug Mart. And that is it for tomorrow, Wednesday, September 9th. Today is Tuesday, September 8th, and I'm going to finish us up here. I put my mask back on so I'm safe out there. You stay safe out there too, friends. Thank you for watching.